throwing things around in Hitman 2 can be a lot of fun and it often has some pretty interesting side effects. But can we replicate the setup in Unreal Engine 4? In this tutorial, we'll use UE4's physics simulation to blend together item and surface sounds to tell the whole story behind each and every impact. Hi everyone, and welcome to this Valkyrie Sound video. The approach in Hitman 2 was to combine layers of sound so that the sound of footsteps wasn't simply grass or concrete, but also included the sounds of Agent 47's footwear, with volumes adjusted to reflect the sonic absorbency of the surfaces he was walking on. This philosophy was applied to physics items as well, so that the sound of a crowbar changed if it struck stone, wood, glass, or someone's head. Whoa, what the For this video, I set out four goals. Number one. Blend impact sounds depending on the force of the impact. Number two, blend item sounds with surface sounds. Number three, prevent low value sounds from triggering, such as when physics items are settling. And number four, prevent weird physics behavior when the player steps on items. I've taken the physics system developed by renowned sound designers Dave Raybould and Richard Stevens and used it as a springboard to meet these goals. You can find their setup as part of Epic's online learning challenge. Both sound designers authored a very popular book called The Game Audio Tutorial. You can take part in Epic's learning challenge, and out of the five lessons available, two of them cover sound, which is really good to see, and you should definitely go and check them out. Because we're going to use different sounds depending on the services that are being impacted, we want to create some physical materials. In the project settings of your project, if you go to physics and then scroll down to the physical surface section, you'll see that I've entered three different types of surface in here. I've got concrete, cube, and pliers. Once you've entered in your physical surfaces, go back to the content browser, right click, physics, physical material, and then physical material again. That will bring up something like this, which I've named PM for physical material, concrete, cube, pliers. And the bottom section here, just make sure that matches with that item from your project settings list. Next, we'll create an actor blueprint. And to this, I've added a pliers static mesh, which I've subsequently changed for a hammer for some reason. If we just expand the details panel a little bit here, you can see that I've ticked the simulate physics box and I've set the mass for this object to three kilos. If we scroll fill it down, under collision, we've got simulation generate hit events ticked. The collision preset is a physics actor. And the material override is set as pliers. So if another item, the same type of item, falls under this item, this is the physical material it's going to access. And if we go into the event graph, we've got an event hit here. And we're going to use the normal impulse. This returns the velocity of the hit event. From that, we're adding a vector length node, which gives us the strength of the impulse as a single float. We're routing that into a greater than node, which will hook up to a branch node. That stops sounds from triggering if the impulse is too small. And from my testing for this particular item with its weight, 100 is a good value here. From the branch node, we're gonna add a do once node where the true output of the branch is going to go to the exact pin and the false output is going to go to the reset pin. As you can see here from the little note, that basically means that we won't be able to generate another sound until a smaller impulse has been generated by the item. And that then goes to a sequence node. Going back to the event hit node, we're going to break the hit result and we're going to get the phase mat or physical material. I've created a map variable with physical material as the key and sound cue as the value. I've added our three physical materials on the left with their corresponding sound cues listed here on the right. I'm just using placeholder sounds for this example. I am finding the physical material in this map and that gets me the corresponding audio, which I'm then routing over here to set a new variable, a sound cue object variable, as the physical material sound. I'm also peeling off from the physical material here and I'm getting that and setting that as a value here as well. Also from the vector length, we're going to add a normalized range node, 
we've got a minimum value there of 0 and a maximum range of 2000. I know roughly that when I'm creating impulses from every hit event, that 2000 is roughly the maximum value that I'll get for a large drop or a large hit. What this node does is it converts any value in that range to a value between 0 and 1, which we can then use to update the volume for each of the sounds we're generating. To do that, I'm storing this as a value I've called force, which is just a float variable in the blueprint. And as you can see, I'm also pulling off from the event hit, the hit location, which I'm then updating a vector variable as the location as well. Now to stop a player from experiencing weird effects when physics items are walked over, we're going to add a branch node here to the second part of this sequence node. And we're going to hook that up to the blocking hit of the break hit result from our event hit. If it's true, we're going to set collision response to channel. The target here is our static mesh. The channel is pawn. And the new response is ignore. This prevents physics interaction with the player only after the item has registered at least one blocking hit with anything in the game, including the player. We now have three sections for our sounds, light, medium, and heavy. At the core of each one is the play sound at location node. We've got a sound selected from the dropdown. It's just a placeholder sound that's pitched higher or lower, uh, just depending on whether or not it represents a light sound or a heavy impact sound. We're plugging location into location. And here we have the volume multiplier section. Now the core part here is the get vector volume node. This is using our force amount to call a value from a vector curve. To add this curve in, we're going to add a variable, call it what you like, in the details panel here. We're going to type in vector curve, and it's the object reference that you want for that. To create this curve in the content browser, right click, miscellaneous, and then curve. And for this, I'm using the vector curve. That gives me three channels to use. If you wanted an extra layer to your sound, you could use the curve linear color, which gives you R, G, B, and A as an alpha channel. But you could use that to generate four float values instead, if you wanted a shimmering sound or the sound of air as the object moves through the air. And this is what the vector curve looks like. So here, for the X line, we have our light impact sounds. For the Y, we have our medium impact sounds. And then for the Z, the blue one, we have our heavy impact sounds. And you can see that we're going to get a, effectively a crossfade effect, depending on what the force value is. So if a force value comes in at 0.4, we're going to get a volume of 0.19 on our medium sound, and a volume of 0.37 on our light sound. Back in our blueprint, if we want to adjust the sound a little bit more, so if we wanted less of the item's impact sound and we want more of the material impact sound, for example, if we are dropping the item in grass, we might want more of the grass sound than we do of the plier sound or the hammer sound. Then I've added a modifier here just called item volume multiplier, uh, which is multiplied by the get vector value output. We're not going to do anything with that in this video, but it shows one further option for modifying this volume if you wanted to expand on this setup. Once you've created your light sound, you can create your medium and heavy sounds. Just make sure you update the get vector value, putting the right pin into the multiplier here. And finally, for our physical material sound, we have the same basic setup. We've got our play sound at location node. We've got our location hooked into that. Here we have the phase mat sound that we set earlier towards the beginning of the blueprint. And this time we're doing something a little bit different for the volume multiplier. I've created another map. And in this map, we have our three sounds. And here we have corresponding volumes for each of those physical material types. So if our item drops onto a cube, it's going to return a value of 0.6 for the base volume of the physical material sound. If it drops on concrete, it's going to return a base value of 0.8. That is then also going to be modified by force so that the heavier the force, the louder that sound is going to be. And again, we have a modifier for that amount that would allow us to further affect the volume of the physical material if we wanted to. 
In reality, you probably wouldn't use maps for this. In a large system, you probably store this information in some data tables. So you could combine it with other impact behaviors like weapon sounds. But for our purposes here, just as a quick demonstration, it's an easy way to show how we can change these values and manipulate them in relation to each other to influence the physics sounds that we get from our items. The other sections that we have here are just for debugging. So debug1 gets the vector length as an input. It adds it to a float array. And from that, I'm getting the minimum and maximum values of that array, which I can then display on the screen. And that helped me to determine the maximum value for the normalized range node. Debug2 simply shows me the volumes for the light, medium, and heavy sounds after they've been modified, and the force value as well. And Debug3 just shows the physical material, the level of the volume, and the volume as it's been modified after we've applied force modifications. This is the blueprint I've used to spawn the hammers, or the pliers. This is going to spawn a pair of pliers every four seconds, and if the player is inside the collision box, we can manually spawn the item as well. Within this collapsed node, we have a bunch of randomization features, which just change the location and the rotation of the static mesh, just to add a little bit more variety for testing purposes. And finally, you'll have no doubt noticed that attached to each of the play sound and location nodes, I've added an attenuation setting, which is a variable, and a concurrency setting, which is not a variable. The attenuation is really straightforward. It has an inner radius of 150 and a fall off distance of 800. And the concurrency limits our sounds to four per owner, stopping the oldest sound first. So let's do a little testing. So we've paused it here. What we can have a look at on the output log, because of those debug sections I have set up, the initial impulse was 3,376. And here we can see we've got the volumes for the light, medium, and heavy. So this is totally a heavy sound. We can see the force value here. And here we can see that was the PM cube material that it landed on. That's its base level of 0.6. And this is what it was modified to once the force had been multiplied by it. Here we have the subsequent sounds as well. Here is the next hit at 556. This one, more of the light sound that's in now, not terribly loud. It hit the concrete that time, 0.8. And this was the modified value based on the force. What if you change this around a little bit? What if we say that we don't want any of the item sound? We just want the material sound. Let's modify that by setting the item volume to zero. And we'll leave our material volume at one. Now, when we come to play, now you'll notice that we're not getting sounds every time there's an impact. So that means our system could be tweaked a little bit further. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting for you. It's not a perfect system, but it's almost as good as the one in Hitman 2. I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, enjoy making your own projects, and as always, thanks for watching.